Who would have thought that coming up to a lake on a mountain in the middle of December would be so cold? You join me today on a day that is pretty much an effort to accumulate hours behind the viewfinder, if you will. I'm at Bear Mountain at Hessian Lake and we're gonna do a little bit more of this landscape photography. The other day I edited a photo of this windy road surrounded by some yellow leaves and I played with a couple of the sliders on Photoshop even though I told myself I wasn't gonna start doing that just yet and it came out really cool and it got me a little bit more fired up with the whole landscape photography thing so we're gonna keep trying that. Now if you're watching these episodes in order you may have already seen my small attempt at product photography which also came out a lot cooler than I thought it would but I find myself getting a bit bogged down with ideas on that. Not an excuse, just the reality. But I'm definitely gonna get more into that. But for now, you may wanna take a look at this. Now I admit, this is all happening, oh my gosh. I admit I picked the wrong time of the year to be doing this because everything is barren. But if I can do it now, I can definitely do it when the colors get better. Now straight away, one of the things I'm noticing is because of the larger landscape, I'm probably gonna be relying on my wide angle a lot more than... But getting that larger landscape, the 16 mils definitely doing the job so far. The other thing is this is going to be a lot of jumping around because I've never been here before and I just entered the park. And this is the first spot that came up. I, I mean, it's the first thing I saw. Parked the car, got out, and started taking a couple of pictures. Again, I can only imagine what this looked like about a month or two ago. I wish I was here at that time. So let's keep hunting for more shots. I'm, I'm curious to see what it'll end up looking like afterwards, because to really, I, there's one part where I slowed down the shutter speed a lot, and it blew out the sky. But I'm wondering if once I get it into, my arms are getting tired. I'm curious to see if that can readjust the exposure, if it kept the detail or not. You see sort of like that, how the sky sort of cleared up as I closed down the aperture. I don't think it did, but let's see. Can I get a picture of that squirrel? Can you see him? Oh no! See, this is where Changing the lens out over and over again becomes annoying because then I could have gotten that squirrel. But before we move on to the next section, take a look at this bad boy. This looked a lot better in the distance. Oh, you see? The sky was blown out again. Boy, I tell you, I was walking through the grass. I had to do a lot of goose poop dodging or a little maneuvering. Yay! Driving along. Found another really, oh, 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 it looks so much better. I saw a little little waterfall going on. Oh, there's a car coming. Oh, there's another car coming. So I was driving along and I found another little spot. Can you hear that? Oh man, I'm taking a little walk past if we find, well not a walk, more like a hike. See if we find anything. Look at that. Look at it, can you see it? It's time for the 50 mil. Looks pretty amazing from here. So as I'm coming on my way down, I had a sort of a culmination of thoughts. I was sort of trying to figure out why it is that all of a sudden this 20 hour idea has gotten me motivated and moving. And when I thought that, something sparked in my mind. There's this thing called the do something principle by Mark Manson. And that's basically this idea that typically we think inspiration leads to motivation, which ends up leading to action. And so we're constantly waiting for that inspiration. But it's actually a triangle. It's sort of, they all feed on each other. When I thought about this idea of why am I all of a sudden in motion? And that's the thing, right? Momentum comes from emotion. You start emotion. And I almost would go as far as to say that action 
could almost be a distractor from things not being perfect, from things, from not being inspired, right? Because you spend so much energy thinking about being inspired and you don't do anything. But if you do something, it sort of occupies your mind and then that leads to motivation. Whether or not the motivation comes first or whatever gets the mind going in a particular direction, it puts things into linear order. So why does this relate to the first 20 hours? Because I may have alluded to this way back in the first series, like the first or second episode of the first series, but what I'm realizing here and now is when you approach a whole field of things, like photography is this huge thing. It's such a vast field and you start out with no questions to ask because you don't know anything and that's daunting, it's intimidating. So you don't even start because you're just like, what, what do I even do? But when you take the 20 hours and you tell yourself, I'm gonna take this thing and just apply 20 hours to it, the task no longer becomes the thing. The task becomes completing 20 hours in that thing. And that might be a random 20 hours, it might be a systematic 20 hours, but whatever it is, you're logging those hours and your mind is now more focused on filling that timer, on getting the 20 hours in. And along the way, you happen to pick things up that you would have picked up if your mind wasn't in the way, but because it's in the way, which is normal and it's common, instead of focusing on that thing, put your attention to completing the 20 hours and you'll inadvertently pick up on things that will build momentum for you to ask the right questions, to go down this route, down that route. For example, with video editing, I spent 20 hours and I learned a certain amount of stuff. More than half of that time was me just reiterating the basic concepts to get videos put together. The association with that is getting the basics done. But now if I've got the basics down and now I wanna learn deeper on some specific thing like color grading, what if I took 20 hours and spent it on that? And then 20 hours and spent it on another fine point. And, and then you see how things start to accumulate. That springs a lot of other thoughts, but I'm gonna leave it at that first basic starting point, that foundation. And then maybe in the subsequent series, we'll sort of pick on parts that build off of that.